Watch, you got this and you got that, and you gon' murder this one and murder that one. Yeah. Talking all that bullshit. I'ma put it to you like this, yo. This is for the nerds. This is for the brainiacs. This is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back. You ain't gonna touch me. You not gon' do nothing. You are not above me. I bet you wish you was me. I know it. I know. What is poppin' everybody, and welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast, where you know it's me and my only friends, which includes, but is not limited to, Mr. Tice. Been a while. Ah, Mr. Well, Tice. I was for it. You deserve it with that fucking blanket again, man. <laughs> Christ almighty. So, um, that's funny, because I looked up, I saw the blanket, and I was like, I'm going to throw it to land. <laughs> It's the only uh, way I can get a, a we, recognize right now. We were filming uh, Poker Out Loud uh, last night. And, ship it in and go um, to bed. <laughs> yeah, ship it in and go to bed. And uh, Carlotta was on, and she was, uh, you know, she said, do you look familiar? And I said, yeah, probably the podcast. And she said, oh, yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah, I sit next to Landon. And she goes, the guy with the blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who said that? Carlotta. It's oh. like, as if she didn't know who Landon is. But <laughs> when she said it, she's like, it suddenly clicks. She's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, he had the bl- he, has, he always has the blanket. She goes, well, he looks comfy. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> He's right. Uh, He's comfy. Yep. Were you happy with your performance, Landon? No. <laughs> Well, I I'm actually was... happy to hear you say that. I, I was I was kind of of the impression that you're no longer receptive to feedback. Fuck call, you. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up at 3 a.m. from a call wall of fucking molding text. Oh. All I saw was Landon snapping, Berkey laughing, and it just seemed great. So can you tell us about it? This is going to be a spicy episode. I need to know about this. So what happened? Spicy. All I know is King Ted of Hearts. Landon, please help me. I went all in. He had King Let's not, you know, spoil too well, much. Yeah, we, don't, we don't have to spoil it too much, but what you do need to know is that this season of Poker Out Loud is going to be phenomenal. Uh, and look, there are going to be people who aren't fans of it because they don't play stand-up in their environment or, uh, you know, they don't, they don't feel like it's real poker, Squid whatever the case games. may be. Um, but Squid game. <laughs> for sure, it's... People were getting murdered. So it's mean. definitely one of the most interesting versions of, of what we can do because... What I've noticed, at least this is my perspective, and I think production agrees, like they, they don't know a ton about poker, so they are able to kind of gauge what the best version of this product is, at least from a watchability standpoint. And they're locked the fuck in mm-hmm. during stand-up because it just breaks the system, right? Like, you know, we did a little bit of stand-up in uh, Poker Out Loud Season 10, and I'm going through and creating On Second Thought now, and it's just abundantly clear you can't use the... Uh, you, you can't use wizard very yeah. well to kind of figure this stuff out. It's not modeled yet, right? It's difficult to to model into the solver how EV is passed uh, from person to person when each each individual is playing for a different risk or reward, right? So like when you don't have when you're still standing, you're on the hook for potentially a 25 big blind penalty. When you're sitting, you're off the hook, and then when you start to play progressive stand up and you're sitting, you're now on the hook to earn five big blinds every pot that you win, while the person standing is on the hook to pay uh, five big blinds basically every hand that they lose. So I don't understand the progressive part. So essentially, um, it doesn't end, it doesn't end uh, based off of... Uh, sorry, let me, let me rephrase. Yeah. It still ends the same way, but once you're sitting, you can still accumulate more rewards. Right. So when you sit in the normal stand-up game, yeah. you, you just... get one bounty. Yeah, you basically just collect EV based mm-hmm. off of other people being too wide. Correct. But when you sit in the progressive stand-up game, you're now incentivized to still win pots because you get a five big blind reward every time that you do. From the person that's... From everybody that's Whoever, standing. Whoever's the last one to sit pays a bounty for every hand that was played during stand-up. What? Yeah. yeah. So if you're playing nine-handed normal stand-up, you know that you're paying eight people bounties at the end. Yeah, but this can and whatever get, the penalty is, it, it get, is. It right? So this wild. is eight. So you'll be paying eight bounties plus thirty hands. If let's you're say. playing nine handed, yes. I've never seen it go past sixteen hands. Okay. Uh, in a full ring game. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. usually it's like at most two hands per player at the table, but <laughs> theoretically it could. Right. If you got the right lineup of passive people and stoppers. Yeah, yeah. Like there are a few people who play that are we just like label them stoppers. They just won't let the fucking game end. 
You know, they're willing to risk it all. Like, you know, maybe chop 700 big blinds in with King Tempri. It would be uh, great for me. No one ever had a chip. <laughs> I'd be the only one. monkeys. Real, real fucking stopper. Chipless monkey um, one. But, but what I noticed is that it, it breaks the game in such a way that uh, we kind of get back to that having to think on your feet, having to outmaneuver. Like, Get a brain solve in real time. Yeah, uh, like, look, we don't know what's right or wrong. Landon and I are at a dead standstill of something being good versus something being bad. And, like, we're both very diligent on our, like, we're dug into our sides where, like, I just think that certain things can be pretty bad. And he thinks that, like, well, it doesn't really matter. It's like, 2008 all over again, ladies and gentlemen. It really is. This is it, what we used to do. Like, when, when, when we first moved out here and we would go through hands and somebody would have, like, you know, a really difficult spot and a really big hand would come up, really we'd difficult. come back to the house and we'd talk about it, right? And then people would take one side and the other person would take the other side and would argue for hours about which, which was the right way to, you know, to play the hand. You know, it wasn't like, oh, we'll just go to the solver and it'll give us the output and then it'll tell us who's right. No, we just argued for hours. We're back to that. And this is amazing, you know, and I don't know. What do you think? It's great Landon? content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you like having to like not have an answer and just have to? It has to kill him. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't have to partake in the argument. No, but you want the answer. Is it, it pains you to not just like have the answer, be able to look up the answer and know whether you play the hand right or wrong. You just have to like argue with you know this guy over here <laughs> yeah you guys argue <laughs> i'm okay i'm, yeah, I'm okay, argue I'm okay a little on bit one. you know well like how do you approach something like this you've always had a tool to kind of lean upon anytime that you wanted to learn something new like this isn't something Perky that we is that tool well no that's not necessarily true but the point is is <laughs> like we disagree and there's no way for you to like you know what i mean like usually when we answer. disagree we can just run some version of a sim and figure out what theoretically makes sense. But in this particular instance, like we're just at a standstill and there's just no way for you to alleviate that. Yeah, there's no actual answer uh, in the sense of what is or isn't going on, just like a risk reward calc. And in this spot, <coughs> a lot of risk for not a lot of reward. So it's like probably not the best idea. It just kind of depends. Like a lot of things had to happen in the hand for a 750 big one jam to even happen in the first place. Uh, one of those things being Hunt calling button, where Hunt's going to have like decent hands, but most of his top end polar hands are just going to three bet themselves, like call it aces kings. So I think that's like the first point of disagreement. I, I don't want to dig too much into this because like we're, <laughs> yeah, we're right. cannibalizing our own right. product. But right. uh, do you not believe that Hunt is just incentivized to basically call range there? I don't think he's range calling. Well, he should be. He should call a lot, right? Because if other people are standing, then you they... should be pip 100 if you don't have a button. I personally don't think so, but we don't have to talk about it. Uh, well, I mean, would love to. I would not love to. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't turn into an actual argument of substance. It just turns into you thinking you're right and me thinking I'm right. Yeah, but it's why we think we're right that matters. Right? I think that in that instance, I'm the only person with the button, so he doesn't have to play deck. Um, but the incentive of the game is to A, avoid the penalty, and then B, be able to accumulate... Uh, big blinds on your own and these penalties are very large like yeah. five big blinds per person is a lot of overlay on a pot once you i think once you switch it over to the the squid game it, or squid progressive squid whatever the hell you call this fucking thing um it yeah you, it's not like it's not like trying to survive or trying well, trying to just sit down and then and you know just make it till you're not the last one standing. i think there's a stronger it's a argument it's a race to no i think there's a stronger argument for him to play deck uh, if it's not Squid Game. Really? Because he only has five hands to sit, and he, this is the only button he's going to get. Yeah, but isn't... You sitting, don't get to surrender the right, button. Right, but I'm saying, isn't sitting very early just worth so much more in the progressive game? It's worth a lot in both. Yeah. It's just worth more in the progressive game. But every it's hand worth more in the progressive game, right? Yeah, obviously, because you're collecting big blinds every time. Uh, you, can, you can collect. You can start collecting bounties. I mean, don't get or me it's wrong. It's more it's pressure it, on it, you. It's, it's, it's worth more because the risk is, is higher. The payoff is right. going to be higher. Yeah, the, but that's it's it's still relative. the 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 reward is still relative to the risk, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, if you're the last one standing, you now have to pay off. So you're saying you should, you should just play range in both. If you are only going to get one button, if you're only going to get one button, it's really difficult to justify reason to surrender it whenever there is a potential twenty five big blind penalty. I don't think yeah. that the button matters that much. I think what matters is the hand you have and how many people are or aren't standing. If, I w if Hunt and I were the only two people left, I would say play deck, of course. You have to play defense. But I see it as an inverse tournament where the last person is the one to lose. 
So if there's only one person with a button, you're risking a lot more of your potential stack to blast it or face two bad aggressive actions where you're not standing either, or the big one's not standing either, or not sitting, and they're just going to play heavy three bets as well. So at the end of the day, you don't have to VPIP deck in order to preserve a button. I, I think you're just I, risking I, too much. I, yeah, I mean, I think like that could potentially be true if you're opening like a 10x. You open two and a half. Yeah. I don't think that matters as, as much. Like, I think this, these 7x open yeah. sizes don't really benefit anyone or do anything reasonable. Strongly disagree with that too. But, sure. uh, you know, we don't have to get into a ton of the mechanics, but if you think of it this way, uh, let's assume it's just st standard stand up game where it's a five big blind penalty per person. The second that you enter the stand up game and six people are playing, you're now on the hook for one sixth of a 25 big blind penalty. So you're on the hook already for four big blinds. Every hand that you fold, that penalty goes up because somebody sits. So if you're minus four big blinds, the very first hand you're dealt in, and then someone sits, now all of a sudden you are minus uh, eight big blinds. Okay, so some hands are still worth... Or six big blinds, rather. Some hands are still not worth that much to defend. It's really hard to lose six big blinds. Possible. Like with it's very hard. There are very few hands that also, are minus six big blinds. I don't know if there is a hand that's minus six big blinds well, pre. It also just depends on the open size, too. Like, good example being uh, when Hunt and I were last to stand. You don't have to talk about it too much. But Hunt opens, and then you and uh, CC call. Yeah. I folded big blind with Jack 8. Yeah, it was crazy. And I think it's really good. You, you're on an island. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You're just on an island. Like, yeah. he opened 5x. Uh, you're on the hook right now for half of a 25 big blind penalty, and the person that you're competing against is in the pot. Playing against two other people that... That have no incentive to win. win. But they also have no incentive to play. That just means that we're calling with, like, hands that have middle equity. You're calling with good hands. So No, not good hands. We're calling with marginal. I called 9-5 suited. Wait, okay. are, are you guys playing yeah, progressive? No. No. Oh, okay. So if you take... If you put the, put the stand-up game aside... How much is, is Jack-8 off losing there by calling? I think it's losing a lot. Like how much? But a lot is like half Versus a, 5x? A lot is like a half a big blind. It's right. more than that. It has to be more than that. It can't lose... It can't be losing a, a, right. how a much substantial really amount of lose? the call. Yeah. Right? You're getting laid a huge price on the pot. There's 5, right. 10, 15, 16, 17 big blinds in the middle. It's four for you to call. You can't possibly be losing four big blinds. Yeah. You know, you're, you you have to be able to realize more than like five percent right. equity here. Even if you're here. losing one full big blind, it's still worth it. To you're call. printing, yeah, according to the to, right. to the penalty. Yeah, of course. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. That's that's the way that I view it. Uh, I, I think that the easiest way to view the stand-up game is to assume that there's a negative big blind loss rate already affixed to the game. Like you're no longer playing poker; you're playing the stand-up game, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's totally. Uh, adjacent to the normal structure of poker. That's why it's so beautiful because there isn't a simple solve to this, right? There, there's a fixed penalty yeah. to certain players in the game. And once you sit, now you have these two sides where one half is playing real poker and the other half is still playing stand-up game, mm -hmm. right? And the fact is that because the stand-up game penalties are so large, you can't, you, you can't uh, underperform according to the penalty. Like you can just play deck in spots, and not lose more than you would lose if you lost the stand-up game. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I don't know how to uh, kind of like calculate or model is how the compounding effect of that happens, right? So if you're willing to take, call it a one big blind loss with every single hand that you VPIP, uh, does that then um, underperform compared to just paying off the 25 big blind penalty? That I'm a little bit unsure of. But you would assume that the, the whole nature of the stand-up game is to realize your equity. Like, that's just it, period. It's just a realization game. It's not about maximizing the EV of the spot. It's not about earning the most that you possibly can with the candidates that you have. But see, I, see, I it's funny because I was, like, watching, you know, I was doing the graphics for Poker Out Loud, and I was watching, you know, these hands go being played out. And I, and I was thinking, like, doesn't it, like, actually... Like it's like yeah, it, it's a path to realization, or it's I want to just win this hand right now. So you would, you were seeing very big opens, and you were seeing very, um, you know, big big bets on the flop and raises and and certain things to just end the hand so you could sit down. But like the fact that people are gonna fight so hard for pots would make me think that like if I had a, you know, marginal or strong hand, I would want to try to play it for max chip EV. 
Uh, yes, because whenever you're just, at, when you're at the top, not when you're in the middle. But I, but like but but why when people when ranges are so <laughs> wide and people are fighting so hard when you're in the middle those hands all now become so much higher in value. They do. You just don't ever want to position yourself in a, in a situation to fold. And these right? people are fighting so hard. That's the other part you just said. Whoever puts you, in the last bet, well, yeah, you don't fold. <laughs> well, that's, that's the point. Yeah, but like I think when you're conceptually saying this, you're talking about like top pair bad kicker. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like you flop bottom pair. Right. No, okay, of course. No, I'm saying like, yeah, but like people but it, would have... But it holds true to the... Uh, when you have bottom pair, there's almost mm -hmm. like no run out where you're not putting money in. No, if you have bottom pair, yes, then you're trying to just realize. But I'm saying it's exemplifying the concept that you're saying. Like bottom pair is never worth three streets in real poker, mm -hmm. right? right? But it obviously goes way up in EV because right. everybody's fighting so hard. So mm -hmm. there's almost no run out where you don't bluff catch with bottom pair. Right. But I'm saying people were taking top pair and doing this. Right. Because you don't want to get blown off. If you're in an SPR of 30, you don't want to put in 30 pots with top pair, no kicker. Yeah. No matter how wide people are. Right. Because by the time that, that final bet goes in, they're going to have enough equity where top pair, bad kicker isn't doing all that well. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I saw some hands. Well, I mean, you know, that's like, that's yeah. the beauty of the stand-up game right. is that we are quote unquote technically the solvers in this situation so we're all iterating against each other we're all trying shit you know mm -hmm. and that's really what a solver does like that's that's the that's the beauty of how we've gotten to this point thus far is we have a machine that's capable of playing trillions and trillions and trillions of hands against itself in the exact same scenario over and over again until it refines itself down to an equilibrium we're just doing that one hand at a time over a bunch of unique scenarios so we'll obviously never arrive at an equilibrium and so much of it is going to be left up to chance and variable, uh, the, the variable nature of how people approach the spot. Like Landon and I viewing this game completely different means that one of us is going to garner a massive edge, right? And it's un unclear, I guess, between the two of us who, who that person will be. But the, the rules of the game dictate that one of those two strategies is going to be correct. It's, it's, it's not going to be a little bit of A, a little bit of B, maybe, but very rarely are you going to have two very conflicting styles uh, meet in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Like they're just, either, if they're working in unison, then what's happening is one of them is completely max exploiting the other, right? Um, otherwise, like you'll see, start to, you'll start to regress to zero where a little bit of both strategies start to make a lot of sense. But yeah, I, I don't know, man. I find it fascinating because I think that this is the way forward for No Limit Cash specifically to, to bring it back to the forefront. Um, I think there's a lot structurally that can change in the live element or in the live realm to really, really, really alter uh, the appeal of live cash. Break the solver. Yeah, and to break the people that are just like slaving away in their basements all the time. Like, I, I think that that's been a big aspect of, uh, let's call it the social part of No Limit Hold'em that's gotten hurt recently is that there are too many good players forced to play like low and mid stakes because they're not well funded and they don't have a lot of social skills. So they just go in there and they're just like BPIP 13%, you know, uh, all they really know how to interact with is like to point and laugh when somebody makes a, a betting error or has a hand out of range or whatever. Uh, this kind of breaks all of that. And this is like one, one version of it. You know, there's going to be many, many, many other carnival games that pop up that we just can't solve and effectively what it really boils down to is uh creating more multi-way environments anything mm -hmm. that encourages multi-way action which is a big big element of the stand-up game in my opinion like limping is a massive strategic edge in stand-up i think flat calling pre is a big edge uh and finding ways to balance these ranges such that you have good hands in your passive lines hmm. is really important so progressive squid game but it every hand's a bomb pot <laughs> no, do, how we're do talking. I, how do we I call that octopus, that? progressive octopus. <laughs> uh, Eight people in the hand at all times. Oct 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 we need a shirt. Octopus. Break the solve. Uh, 2024. You heard that here first. Mm -hmm. Trump, Biden, JFK Jr. You want to win? All you got to do is break the solve. You figure out the way to make sure we get all the carnival games in the casinos. You got the poker, the poker, <laughs> poker communities, bro. There we go. I said company. Yep. The poker companies. Are here the for poker you. companies votes here for you. That's who saw. That's who's going to decide the 2024 election it's, is the poker true. community. I don't even know who's running. <laughs> you just said. Is that true? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, you nailed it. 
right. He's cooking. Yeah. Well, he's I only cooking. Saw, the only reason why I got JFK Jr. because he didn't pick Aaron Rodgers as his running. No, team. he picked um. Oh, uh, what is her name? Uh, a lawyer a from ph- California. Yeah, she's a uh, philanthropist, and uh, yeah. So he's running so, independent. He's running independent. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Is is Vivek also running? No. Is Kanye? But running? he might be Trump's VP. You know, uh, there was. There's rumors on somebody, that. Somebody, I can't remember who told me this. Uh, it was a few. Oh, I think it was. Uh, I think I heard it at the gym from uh, Jamie. Um, big shout out to former former MTT pro. Uh, <laughs> but he, I think he was telling me that there's speculation that I can't remember which account it was. But basically, there's this Twitter account that's I think like Jamie Kirsten. No, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> former uh, MTT pro. No, she's current. Current uh, MTT pro. No, <laughs> I, that's why I laughed. Uh, it, it's Jamie Rosen. Um, I I can't remember what the account was, but basically he said that there was a financial account, like it was a it was a, not an alt account, but like an anon account, mm-hmm. uh, and it had like nailed all of these predictive markets over like the last five to ten years or whatever. Like it nailed Bitcoin price, uh, it nailed like the crash and all this other stuff. Uh, and he said that there's a lot of speculation that that account has actually been Vivek all along, Ooh. which would be kind of interesting. Interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I almost think it would make him like less electable to the general populace. <laughs> right. You know, I think like so many people are like, I, I truly think that the general public views markets and uh, a lot of things that just drive the economy in general. I think the general public views them as very, uh, very wealth oriented, very it, much towards the elites. It is because I mean, like you look at the entire population of the country, what, like five, maybe 10% own actual own stock. Right. Actually have like, you know, skin in the game when it comes to the, the stock market. And maybe slightly crypto, with property. Uh, right. Pro- properties even maybe even less. Yeah. 10% sounds pretty high. I think 5% is almost yeah. like. Yeah. May, 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 uh, yeah. Like when it comes to it's stocks in that, and crypto. Right. It's I, in I, that range. I feel right. like it's oh. between zero and five. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. It's so it's just lot. like they just like you. They view the stock market. Imagine how crazy that is, is too. Rich people moving money around. Imagine how crazy that is too. That uh, so few people are are dabbling, and well, we people don't have money. To dabble. Say, no, I understand that, yeah. but I'm just saying. Like, think about that from a sheer number sp- standpoint. Like, specifically the market, right? Uh, you, you, we all understand how the stock market moves. Like, there's just um, a lot of uh, corporate money that's invested in it. Whatever, yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. There's some retail, but it's not like infinite amounts. How the stock, you, stock market moves? Somebody in Congress buys it and then it goes up. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about uh, when you think about like the crypto market specifically now, where we're in a bull run and all of these meme coins are just like pumping and dumping and like you know, there's just infinite volatility in right. this space, right? You think about it, it's like, it's not technically retail, but it is retail. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, like, it's like almost private <laughs> retail, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Because it's idiots like us that are speculating. Right. But we're obviously sharper than the random person who would log into Coinbase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it was, it's usually the, the Wells and the Sharps that are making all the money on the hundred, Obviously. I mean, yeah. that, regardless of what you qualify the retail as, right. it's always going to be the, the, the tops that make it. But mm-hmm. my point is, is like... You look at some of these market caps. I, I mean, there was a coin that launched. Uh, Slurve? I don't remember. Man, there's so fucking many. Yeah. But something launched like about a month ago, and it's already at a quarter billion market oh, cap. Oh, one, one, one to one went to a billion in a day, Burke. Yeah. A billion that's what I mean. in one day. That's what I mean. So like, <laughs> where, where, like, if, if the, yeah. if the uh, actual number of people speculating is low, where the fuck is all the money coming from? <laughs> the top one. No, it, it can't be because they're the ones who are making it all. I mean, <laughs> they can't be both pumping it and dumping uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess they could technically. No, That's yeah. what Elon did with Doge. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That's kind of, I don't want to say it's stable, but it's kind of like, you know, been a good investment thus far. Doge, yeah. It's better Shockingly. than fucking XRP. Uh, I actually, maybe not. Why? XRP is uh, going to have its moment? I, I don't know. I personally don't know. I'm regurgitating <laughs> not, something not that somebody else who doesn't know shit about right. shit is saying. Uh, but there was some thoughts that uh, XRP might now that the um, court case. What what court case? Well, XRP has a court case for something that I don't know. I have a friend. They won oh, that so, years ago. Didn't so they? I, yeah, I, I thought, thought so. Nothing happened. Yeah. So yeah. the thing with XRP was that it was supposed to take over Swift uh, in banking. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to become the new digital currency right. for banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the speculation is now that the ETF has been approved, that they may get one step closer to taking over 
uh, the, 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 the banking industry as, as their new digital currency. But I don't think it really matters that much to us. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, sure, you can speculate, you can time it, maybe you can do okay. But the point is, is, like, at the end of the day, it's it's very similar to the dollar. They just, I think it's every quarter or every year, um, they pump the supply. And it's it's endless. Like, they, they can print XRP from now until the day that we all that vanish. I have, yeah. a, I have a friend that's been buying XRP <laughs> for, like, the last four years, I want to say, since the last crypto boom. Yeah. And it has just been holding on to it. I got really lucky with it. I bought it when it was, like, 40 cents, maybe? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been um, head, it's been holding at like sixty cents for like ever, right? About no, it's like a dollar, right? A, a little over half the supply is in circulation. Sure. So it's at sixty-one cents. Uh, there, yeah, there's a hundred billion in total supply, and fifty-four billion, almost fifty-five billion, is in is in circulation. But so, but, look, but what you're look, saying is correct because they've been they've been pumping and putting more and more. But eventually, I'm, I'm it'll not come sure to that it. I, I'm not sure that it does come to an end. I, so this is my very very bad memory of it. Mm-hmm. But in 2018, so I bought XRP in 2016 for like 40 cents and in mm-hmm. 2018 it pumped uh and i got really lucky i got out of it like near eight all-time high i got out at like 250 or something like that how good do you run so good so fucking lucky but <laughs> the big reason why i got out is because uh they had there, there was grumblings that they were going to make an announcement which they ultimately did make shortly thereafter and it crashed it didn't crash the coin but like it lost its value by like half there's an unlocking or something something was happening where they had decided that every january or like every q1 or maybe every quarter in general they were going to continue to release new tokens and mm-hmm. i thought they said it was indefinite i didn't think I, I i thought that they didn't put a cap on it you might be right that they no i mean i'm looking at the at the coin info now it says max supply is 100 billion Okay. And, and Maybe it just was. It was just such a gaudy number. Mm-hmm. All time uh, right. high was three dollars and eighty four cents. Yeah. yeah. So I, I got out I, sl- uh, a few months before. But yeah, I know it's been like at fifty. Current cents price is sixty one. It's amazing that XRP and Cardano, ADA has been like, uh, like, in the top ten. They're just hanging around in the top ten yeah. of crypto assets. For years, they're not like going down. They're not going away, but they're not doing anything either. Everybody that's like, bought it believes gaming, in yeah. it. It seems like yeah. they just like well, right. XRP was like the true re- retail Multi-die. coin. Yeah. It, it was the true retail coin. Like mm-hmm. it was the only coin yeah. during the first boom where like your aunt and your uncle had heard about it mm-hmm. because it hit mainstream media, right? Like it was almost the antithesis to Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. It, was the it one wasn't that had shady. A yeah. yeah, it wasn't shady. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't moving the black market or anything like that. It was supposed to be attached to swift banking and all right. this other shit. So your grandma thinks that this is like the equivalent to a blue chip stock mm-hmm. and, you know, just buys a bunch of it at a few cents per share and just like praise and holds. Yeah. Uh, who knows if it's ever going to amount to anything, but I digress. We've, <laughs> we've moved way off of uh, the general <laughs> and talking And that's how points. Squid Game's going. Right. And that, that is, <laughs> if you want to know about Progressive Squid Game, just reach out to Tom Dwan. He's bringing it to ACR. Don't you worry. It's, <laughs> it's coming soon, kids. Um, in a, in a not-so-joking tone, uh, yesterday Sean Deeb tweeted about a rug, speaking of crypto, that Sean Perry potentially pulled on his uh, Telegram group. So... He basically said, I heard a rumor that Sean Perry wins rug pulled his followers on an airdrop of some token called Earth that he sold first. Big shock there. Don't know anybody who listens to this scammer. Man, I can't believe I was able to actually insert grammar, uh, <laughs> like proper grammar there. Good for me for reading ahead. Uh, so fast forward then um, about half a day. And last night, Sean tweets, apparently I pissed some people off in the Sean Perry wins crew who decided to dox my whole family's social security number and threaten us. I feel bad that this happened to my family, but it doesn't mean I'll stop calling a scammer a scammer. And if you look, this has 1,200 comments on it. I wonder Jeez. how many it has now. Because when I'm I looked, looking at it right now. It has 1,200. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because yeah. when I looked at it last night, it was at 1,000, and I was like, holy shit. So it has 1,200 comments on it. A lot 12, of them. Or, no, 1,200. 1.2K. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said 12,000. No, 1,200. Okay. Uh and I'm looking at it now. It looks like the vast majority of the botting has been deleted. But last night when we looked, there was probably 100 comments in a row that were just bots. Uh, there's still some in here. It says, in the Bible, the devil has wanted war. And from there, well, he's, and it puts out uh, <laughs> someone's social security number. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm assuming this is Ashley or whatever, someone in his family's social security number. So yeah, if you like scroll through, these bots are all through here just doxing the deeps. Which is really fucked up. That's fucking yeah. absurd, man. Um, and, you know, it's... I think the absurd thing is that 
this type of botting exists on Twitter and Elon, who's been somebody that's been pretty proactive about claiming that he's getting the botting under control. That it's he's, not under control. No, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's so much worse than on, it ever was. It's funny if you're on crypto Twitter at all, it's just like literally every, every com like underneath the, the all the yeah. comments are just bots and scams and I'll for whatever one, reason on poker, there, on poker Twitter, it's all fucking sex botting. It, all of it, it was, everything it's yeah. wild it was horrible like i want to say like a year ago but i've seen it feels like it's been cleaned up for me at least like my personal mentions and stuff like that like i don't get that many i used to get like i don't know seven a day and i feel like i maybe see once a week now i had to shut off like i actually had to shut off um mentions of, of people i don't follow mm -hmm. because oh, it was literally that. just non-stop yeah so yeah. i've blocked a few of like the sex bots or whatever and don't uh, lie to us. And for whatever reason, now <laughs> they just like auto mute themselves. You know how you have to click like show more. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have them muted, but I yeah. don't have them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is blocked what they call subscribe nowadays? Yes. That's, <laughs> honestly, it's like it's it's so laughable to me because uh, I don't understand. I just don't get it. Like this version of engagement farming can't work. Nobody on earth can be clicking these fucking links. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Link in bio. It's just so fucking impossible. I mean, maybe it's a numbers uh, game and then they just... It's, it's, it's like the, the, the Prince of Nigeria email. It's like, okay, sure, I understood how it worked initially. Well, I think I think the problem is is you click on these links and then it puts malware on your device. No, I understand that. Right. So they only need to get a few people and then to make it worth it. I would say that the Prince of Nigeria is still fucking people. To yeah. this to this day, the I, Prince of Nigeria is still out there fucking people. Maybe I maybe I just give people too much credit. Way too like, much. Yeah, way too much. All those people that live in Pittsburgh, they fall for that every no, they week. They fucking don't, man. <laughs> you don't now Cleveland. You watch your mouth. Now Cleveland, on the other hand, <laughs> just kidding, Cleveland. No, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I mean, maybe I give people a little bit too much credit, but like, I, right, I just look at the construction of these tweets. And it's like impossible to think that there's anything on the other side of it. It's possible. You know what I mean? It's like, it's worse than the old, at least the, the old one nine hundred commercials that you catch <laughs> late night on USA made you feel like, ah, oh, this girl might be into me. You know, yeah. maybe I could sway her. seems like if we had a little conversation, <laughs> she might be interested in the big dog, you know? But like this, it's just like, it's an AI generated fucking profile that says S period x period you know whatever it's like with a fucking link that just says hey this is a goddamn trojan horse god i would love to see how many people click a lot of lonely people today. out there bro. i know there's gotta That's be a true. good amount man. this actually reminds me of my 18th birthday i'll try to make this as, <laughs> i'll try to make this as quick as possible please don't oh, oh, let every god. detail go up everyone i was working at a shoe store called just for feet um <laughs> Just for feet. Yeah. It's actually, it was actually a, pretty, a pretty big brand back uh, in the day. A shoe Anyways. store. Yeah. No. So I had been there. Sounds since like I was an only I'd been there since I was 15 years old. Um, and when I turned 18, all the guys in the warehouse were like, "Yo, we're gonna take you to Little Darlings." Yeah. It's like, all right, that sounds great. Well, yo, bro, sidebar: Little Darlings in New Orleans. That place is dangerous. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, we get there. I'm having the time of my life. Um, one of the guys gives me twenty dollars. Like, get a lap dance. I said, okay. So I get a lap dance. This young lady takes me to the back. I get a dance. I come back out. I'm like, yo, I need to get another dance because this girl really likes me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I'm there with like six guys, and they're like, no, 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 spread it around. You know, here, here's a little bit more money. And and I was like, no, you guys, you don't understand. Like, this girl really <laughs> likes me. So I end up getting like 10, 15 dances from this girl, and sure enough, she didn't like me, guys. No. Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> Uh, not not, not to she play. Didn't like you, she loved you. Not to play this game, but it it really does. I think I told this story before, but uh, when I was 25, my college catcher was getting married, and we had his bachelor party on Bourbon Street a week before Mardi Gras. So we go down there. It's like 106 degrees with humidity, like just impossible to be outside. Spend all day on Bourbon Street. They're going bar to bar, trying every specialty drink, the hurricanes, and everything else. Everybody's black the fuck out. We end up at Little Darlings. On, on bourbon at the end of the night. And first of all, my guy was out of fucking pocket. Like, <laughs> I'm not positive he cheated on his fiance that night, but I would put the odds at really, really high. <laughs> like, he was just out of fucking hand. Minus 400. So we're, we're there, and I just really don't enjoy strip clubs. Like, 
They suck. They're <laughs> miserable. They're fucking sad. They're, they're they sad. They're very <laughs> sad. They actually are sad. They're kind of sad, yeah. yeah. Like, why? I don't, the I don't the thing is, it. is like, I can see the appeal. I completely understand what about it is uh, fun and appealing. It's just you have to be able to, especially like if you're drinking, I could definitely see the appeal, right? But no matter what it is, you have to be able to create the facade. Right, like you have to be able to tell yourself what Guapo told himself. <laughs> like she really like you got to buy into that. You know what no, I mean? No, because that's you how you lock end, in. That's, that's how, how you end up money. on fucking uh, uh, police. Obviously, that's how you end up getting got. That's but that's the point. They're meant to be a trap like that, right? But that's where the enjoyment comes as well. Is like literally convincing yourself. Selective like, entrapment. It's that they're yeah. catering to your ego. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I personally. I, I kind of struggle with that. It's like, I just see it for what it is. You know, I'm around a bunch of drunk dudes who want to see naked girls and like, sounds like a party. Let's hang out. So we get a table in the back and we're all like hanging out back there. Everybody's drinking. They're going up to the stage, throwing ones at them, whatever. And this girl on stage like comes down and she, she's smart. Sees a group of bachelors for her party. Like Piece I'm going to come, I'm going to come over and entertain this table, you know? So she comes over and like my whole shtick is like I kind of want to get to know these girls. You know, I want to hear their stories. Tell me about yourself. Oh, yeah, like let, let's 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 tell me how you got here. Wow, this is a good podcast. This is going to be a lot for of sure. Astrology. This is a good podcast. If you find that one, bro, for sure. Well, I mean, it definitely exists somewhere for sure. But, Maybe. Uh, there, well, there's one pod that we they it's only called no jumper. <laughs> <laughs> True. Shout out to my man Adam. Shout out to Adam. Um, but there, there's a pod that where they like pretty much only interact with OnlyFans girls, uh, and then they base it's it's a weird like menace type of pod where they're the, trying to like condemn the, the girls for being on the, OnlyFans. The whatever podcast. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. I love listening to that shit, dude. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just, I it's, don't care about any of them. It's just a straight drama. Right. It's like watching cringe humor type stuff or like Jerry Springer like, type look, stuff. Like Brian watches like Vanderpump Rules and like all that shit. Like this yeah. is my Good version of that. Night. And yeah, I'm yeah. just like, you know what? I'm just here to listen and just laugh. You like wanna, it's all in the background. You, you know? know what I agree with? It's like watching that, what, watching those whatever podcasts, it's easy to hate both sides at the same time. It's very fun. Right. It's easy to like hate the guys who are like being holier than thou. And just being like, aren't you a shit? Like, how are you ever going to breed? <laughs> it's oh, wait. Like, is this the group one that, yeah. like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. all over your TikToks the table. and stuff yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I fucking hate this. Of course. Of course. It's, it's like to toxic masculinity versus, like, the ultimate version of, like, fuck you. I'm going to do what I want. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's such good content. And it's, like, so hateable from both sides. You know, it's like these guys talking down to the women are just, like, so fucking cringe. But then hearing these women's responses, like, they couldn't, they, they literally couldn't construct worse answers yeah. to the questions. <laughs> It's, it's so, like, oh, honey. It's oh, no. It's so good, man. It's great. Um, There's nothing good about that show. <laughs> no, it, it, it's so fun. It's car, cr it's car crash it's, content. Yes. You can't look away. Right, exactly. You can't, you can't not listen. You got to be there. Uh, you made my Vanderpump. So, so anyway. Uh, Vanderpump, it's seven hours straight, Brian. This podcast is like seven hours, like every other twice a week. Do you week. know how many seasons of Vanderpump Rules there are? Do you know how many episodes of this about, podcast there are? About, probably about the same amount. Like 500. <laughs> Yeah, there's probably 500 episodes. You yeah, know, maybe not. Yeah. You know who's almost at 500? Us. This podcast right here, mm -hmm. baby. Keeping this fucking train on the tracks is a goddamn <laughs> chore. I deserve a fucking medal. Where is my GPI? Do you see one. what I deal with? I, I want another. Showered. I want another one. Best host of the year. You got to steal it from a Hardigan. Sidekick. sidekick. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so we're all like back. In, there's probably a dozen of us, I would say. This girl comes back with a few of her, her stripper friends. They start dancing, hanging out, and, like, you know, working the room, doing their thing, right? My whole shtick is, like, you do, I'm, you're not going to get any money out of me. So, like, if you want to work, <laughs> you should talk to these other guys. They're inebriated. <laughs> They're going to throw dollars your way. This girl, for whatever reason, like, comes over, and she wants a challenge. She's like, I'm going to make him pay for a lap day. You know what I mean? So, she's like, sitting on my lap, and we're talking. And like, I'm literally asking her, like, big questions. It's like, so, uh, you know, it starts with, like, where are you from? She's from Alabama. And it's like, okay, well, what brought you to New Orleans? And yada, yada, yada. And it's like, oh, well, how did you end up doing this? for? And suddenly we're like two hours into a conversation. <laughs> I was like, don't you have to go dance? She's like, I'm just going to take the rest of the night off. <laughs> she hangs out with us going to other strip clubs for the rest of the night. It was <laughs> such a fantastic experience because now I have a wingman who knows the inner workings of all this. So it's like her and I now, like working the rooms, 
with the other like dancers and stuff like that. Meanwhile, the bachelor man, oh my god, I don't know where he ended up, but he wasn't he had, with you. He, he had was, a very he was in the champagne room. He had a very uh, <laughs> he had a very, <laughs> found him. He had a very <laughs> refined taste for the larger black women. Okay, oh, okay. Just, and I, if you <laughs> if I could describe him to you, he's literally five three. <laughs> I mean, he is just like the tight. I don't he's know like how. Pounds. <laughs> so no, basically, he, he moved he to New Orleans. After. He was a beefy kid. No, no, he's still. <laughs> married he's doing great i was gonna ask 16 years later 17 yeah. years later he's still married kids yeah. whole wow. nine yards probably coaching little league somewhere good for him he's doing great i, I don't want to out him in case you know nah, nah, his wife might be a fan you're, I don't talking know. The stripper, you're talking a stand-up game with the strippers <laughs> yes yeah I, uh, now uh, i lost my yeah, uh, look i have a button i lost my <laughs> <laughs> they're all standing I think I've lost my 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 ability. You know, at 26, you're still just horned up enough where you can engage in conversation and think that maybe it'll lead somewhere. 42, it's just like okay. So the premise of the game is you, if you, you, you need sit, an outlet. You need an outlet. Right, right, right. It's like okay, so it's like musical chairs. If you don't get a chair, you owe me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the sound of this. Yeah. What a good friend you are. I couldn't imagine going out with a whole bunch of drunk people not being a drinker. And, Bro, it's so much fun. That sounds so miserable it with somebody so else. It's so much fun. You, you just have... You Peak have, voyeurism. I mean, like, I probably don't want to do that drunk. Are you a people like, watcher? Yeah, I love, love watching people. Okay, then you understand how much fun people. I had, man. I, yeah, I guess. It's just the only time that yeah. it gets a little bit not entertaining is whenever the testosterone tends to over like there's always one fucking guy in the group yeah that's, that's there's the, always it's like who invited ned ned you know how this fucking ends yeah that's the thing i can't do that one person like they just right they, i just i'd there, rather stay home there is always one but you know he's always also <laughs> the the fastest to get blacked out yeah so you hope to just get him in a cab and get him the fuck out of here? <laughs> Shout out to Denny. I was just thinking that. Before. I can not remember his name. <laughs> My best friend Jace's bachelor party was out here. Uh, and they I they spent, heard the story. I spent the yeah. entire day from from morning until dawn the next day babysitting Denny. Like we went out on a boat on Lake Mead and by 2 p.m. This motherfucker is like dead to the world. I remember you had the me, whole night, ahead, whole sent, night ahead of us. You sent me a text at like two o'clock in the morning that day. Like, what are you doing? Can you come pick up Daddy? And he he couldn't. I don't know where he was. I don't know like, where I was, but I couldn't. He was either drunk himself or like somewhere else. So I'm Ubering home with this guy who's literally blacked out, and he threw up. With the The only way I can describe it is it looked like he just projectile vomited oatmeal in this guy's Uber. The guy sushi. driving, oh man, the guy driving was so sweet. He was like, mm -hmm. "It's okay, I understand. I'm just gonna charge you a hundred dollars." Like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, you're well, just like the strippers, uh, yeah. <laughs> taxing that ass. Poor Somerville had a similar story. He won his first bracelet. Um, I think he won like half a million dollars or something. Okay, D, D Negs took him to uh, took him to the Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> little, <laughs> In little, hindsight, little hilarious. Little. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Just hilarious. <laughs> Not his cup of tea. Oh man. Uh, All funny. right. Let's uh let's get into in the muck. Sorry, I I I <laughs> just <laughs> 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 All right, we are in the muck again, and uh, this one comes from the latest Sulfur Y Academy. So uh, we're going to have a little Academy footage for you, but um, since there's two tables, this was uh, I picked up on the turn, the footage. So uh, prior in the hand, what happened was uh, it was a hand between Dave and Will, and uh, Dave said, this hand is from the January Academy. It was day one, so... Breaking flow doesn't make me Judas. Now he said he said this because uh, we told them that you know you can't the whole day you can't break flow, aka like make donk leads or right. Do to give you guys a a little bit of understanding, on day one they were just like constantly calling and then leading on right. like king seven yeah, four. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. So like they, they told. <laughs> so them, day two we yep. we just put a hard. You're not allowed to donk in exactly. any spots. Exactly. Um, so uh no luck that shit right right <laughs> so uh uh will has about uh a little over a thousand he is a thousand sixty and he opens with uh seven of spades seven of diamonds from the button to 25 they're playing 510 and uh dave calls and he has him covered 
Uh, he has five of diamonds, five of hearts in the small blind. Uh, the big blind folds, and the flop comes six of spades, three of hearts, four of hearts. And uh, there's 60 in the pot. And Dave breaks flow and leads for 40. Will calls. The turn is the five of spades. And, uh, and uh, Dave bets 125. Will raises to 365. And, uh, and then, uh, let's see. Sorry. And then Dave jams for his remaining $630 in Will Calls. So he's jamming for like two-thirds pot. Yeah. Um, okay. This is an interesting spot. Uh, I think, where, where, what decision point does Dave feel like he's in the muck here? Um, so he says, I'm in the muck about the Donkley turn size and my river jam. Okay, and what was the turn size percentage of pot wise? Uh, so the turn he bet one twenty five into one forty. Okay, that's the problem. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll raise to three sixty five. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, my my takeaway from this is I I know we said that they aren't allowed to break flow, and he still shouldn't have because we basically no locked them in that regard. But this is a good board texture to do to it. break flow. Yeah. Um, you need to be somewhat cognizant, though, of what the range is that continues passively and what what density to different regions he'll have. So uh, the board was 6'4", six, 6'4", four, six, four, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the board was 6'4", six, six, two hearts. Six, six of spades, three of hearts, four of hearts. Right. So what you're going to see um, a large density of Will's range being is over pairs that choose not to raise. Some of them will raise some of the time, some of them won't. So it'll mostly probably be over pairs. I would assume, what do you think, Lana? With or without a heart would be more aggressive? I would say without, right? I think with. Oh, okay. More equity is better. I, I, I'm, I'm totally indifferent, so <laughs> a with is fine by me. Uh, but in any event, like he'll split his over pairs based off of if they have a heart or not when he chooses to raise. So we'll have some over pairs. Uh, we'll have- like Raise I, versus lead, you mean? In position. In position versus as a response a versus, versus a lead. lead. Which ones will we choose to raise? I still think heart, but I'll check. Okay, yeah, it's fine. Um, I mean, we'll get to the bottom of it, but basically, we're speculating that he will split his over pairs, largely favoring either having or not having the heart when he chooses to raise flop. So when he calls, he's going to be condensed to over pairs that either do or don't possess the heart. Uh, he's also going to have a lot of uh, non combo draws. So you're going to see a lot of like two overs and a flush draw. You're going to see a lot of uh, hands like nine, ten of hearts. Obviously, that's still two overs and a flush draw. But my point is, is that um, you know he's going to have non-nut draws. He's going to have nut draws, etc. They can't all fit into a raising range, especially on a texture like this. Uh, and then he's going to have like pairs and over pairs that also possess draws to them. So he's going to have hands like six, seven. He's going to have hands like six, five. He's going to have hands like sevens and uh, like eight, seven, um, things of that nature. Right. So when the turn comes to five, obviously this is advantageous both for the small blind leading range and for that exact hand, pocket fives. The issue becomes we're not polarizing on a one liner mm -hmm. or I guess on a four liner, depending on how you qualify it. So you could have either a seven or a two for a straight at this point. Um, and the, the issue with polarizing here is that in position has more eight, seven than you do. You're not going to flat all of it pre. You're not going to lead all of it post. So there is a massive concentration uh, or, or a massive imbalance, I should say, in nuts here. In position actually has the nut equity if we're talking specifically 8-7. When we're talking about just any straights, they're going to be a little bit more evenly distributed between the two ranges. Um, but again, in position's range is going to be condensed quite a bit because he's the one facing the aggressive action. So out of position is still going to be the wider range and it's going to have a lesser concentration to the absolute nuts in 8-7, which means that when we choose to bet, which we're afforded bets, we're allowed to have bets, but when we choose to bet, we now have to size way down. Can't take a polar action. We are taking a polar action. Oh, we can't I, take a polar size. Right, right. right? Yes, when you, when you lead into that, you are taking a polar action because it is a one-liner, correct? Yes, yeah. So the, so the action is, but you can't, you don't want to be bloating the pot because of the nut advantage for the uh, imposition player. Well, you both have straights. 
Right, but but what I'm saying is like the eight seven concentration is higher yeah, to imposition. The actual nuts. Exactly. Age. And and moreover, um like let's let's take this to the farthest extreme. Let's say he just open jams, right? Mm -hmm. What's the burden of defense for imposition facing like three X pot here? Like what do we think the bottom call would be? A deuce. Probably. Yeah. Or or maybe it's like sets and then a seven. Yeah. Like maybe a set is actually worth more than a deuce, right? Maybe because a deuce improve, deuce can't improve. Right. So it's it's just kind of demonstrating how high up in the equity distribution you have to be when facing larger and larger and larger sizings. So the pot size bet here or near pot size bet here doesn't accomplish what Dave wants it to accomplish. Because when you choose to bet in general, you're basically saying that I have a range that's willing to play for stacks. But the way that you keep that balanced is that you also are saying, I have a range of hands that are happy to bluff cheaply, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to have hands like nine, 10 of spades that you chose to lead the flop with there that will follow through as a turn barrel and then as a happy fold. Or maybe eight, nine of spades would be a better example because you still have a gut shot, right? So uh, when you have those sort of hands, you're now just going to happily fold them. Even if you have like eights, this is probably a hand that you're just going to bet fold. It's really not worth much to you bluff catching because you block all of his bluffs. Most of the bluff region should come from 8x yeah. in position, right? So the whole, in the, or the whole what puts him in the muck here is sizing selection on the turn and understand, or not understanding where his hand falls in the rankings of potential holdings that he can have he's still beat by a higher set which isn't going to raise often but that's like where the semi bluffs will come from in will's range um and then he's also just losing to all 7x which is a huge problem so getting raised here is a real big problem and having two sevens is very similar to having eight seven in the sense that you're very unlikely to be up against a better hand mm -hmm. and there are worse hands that you can extract value from Right, So I think the issue here, and we'll find out whenever we look at the wizard, but what puts Dave in the muck here is he just telegraphs his range yeah, and makes it very easy for imposition to play. If, if Will has queens, he has a very easy fold. Well, you don't want that to ever happen. No. right? You want to try to charge queens mm -hmm. by having a full range that's able to bet small. So I think I would imagine our turn lead size, I'm not really sure what the SPR is, but it's going to be somewhere between quarter and 40% pot. Uh, that's that's my best estimation. What do you got for me, Sim Sim Kid? Yeah, Sim Kid. <laughs> Sim Kid. Sorry. Uh, so flop for him, you can lead e forty, nice size. Uh, he went a little bit bigger, so like this is the sixty seven spot. Five still gonna kind of get in there a little bit. Uh, versus forty, when you have button, you have pairs the heart, you raise more. You want to be able to make a flush in case you're somehow beat, kind of across the board. Okay, so it was it was the ones with the heart that we raise the ones without or the ones we call yeah okay gotcha um so i guess we'll just use the the practical one so bet call turn five so the size he chose here was uh like be like 90 percent mm. uh but the correct size if it's like call it even if we give the theory sim like call it the, the whatever four big blinds the four big blind one it's still going to be b40 the so lead lead call Turn was five of spades, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B40. It just likes, it buckets to 40. Yeah. 40 is nice because, like, you still have your sets, and five is a nice hand to lead because you still beat some of the sets that he's not going to raise you on flop with, I mm -hmm. imagine. Like, sometimes, uh, like, you bet the flop and he's not going to raise the sets because the board gets scary and he should be scared. Right. <laughs> um, so you can still just, like, kind of equity push where you're going to lead with some, some seven X's. You don't have that many. Uh, you have some, and then you have these pairs and these over pairs, and you're targeting the high cards in, in his range. With B67 on flop, he's going to start folding those high cards anyways. Right. And if you go back to that real quickly, um, look at how much 8x that you have that you could potentially turn into a cheap bluff on the on, on the turn, right? You have 8s, 9, 8, 10, 8, king 8, queen 8. Um, yeah, you go pretty hard. Right. So you can see that those are where we're pulling our bluffs from, but we never go above the B40 because we just fuck ourselves then. Yeah. And it's okay to have hands like 8x that you... Go 40% if you get raised, you can just fold. Yeah, I think it's really nice to visually see how the range starts to shape. It's it's uh, almost like um, uh, parabolic, right? Where it's it's just very linear. It's it's the pairs, and then it really centers around 7x and 8x. Yeah, straight. <clears throat> and then your bluffs are here, and then you have some... 
your bluffs here, just like with queen nine, when you lead flop, are going to be flush draws. Right. You're not going to have queen nine of diamonds. Right. I assume it's the same with king queen. Yep. Where same. we have that. Yeah. Uh, well, here you actually have like. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. I would never have found these leads for, for what it's worth. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> sure. You just have king queen blue and you lead the flop and blue. you bet the turn because we want to have a king sometimes. Yeah. Uh, anyways doesn't matter too much i suppose i guess you want to have the clubs and diamonds because when you go 40 percent the the offsuit broadways of the heart now fold mm. uh more like ace queen gets to fold right uh, the and they, they weren't peeling king queen of clubs or diamonds to begin with on the flop yep so that doesn't really matter yeah versus the size you choose they just yep. fold so you yep. kind of have unblockers a king sometimes is nice but very cool concept sure uh we go big bet on the turn uh, and he raises, and his raises come from 7x. His raises come from flush draws. Looks like more the front door flush draws than the back doors. Like right. Arts more than spades. Makes sense. Uh, and then 7x. Makes sense that it's like king high too because you dominate some. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> a7 just a straight. That's a good hand. Ace 8's not a good hand, but it could be. And then a6 is like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I have a six. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> so now, like, uh, it, it probably that block six, five, and sixes. Yeah. So, small blind here after facing the raise, like, can you jam? Like, sure. Is it like that big of an EV difference in theory? Like, no. Is the issue like, is someone that you're playing against going to raise a hand like a six? Some of it's the times? interesting that you jam five some of the time and sevens never. Yeah, well, you just—I guess you just weight him more towards bluffs, right? Um, and he shouldn't be—he shouldn't be raising a set on the turn anyway. Right, right, right. Like he doesn't have fucking uh, fours. It's like, why would I raise? When well, I it's can make it, a what makes it interesting to me is that fives can improve and sevens really can't. So the board can deteriorate for sevens, but not fives. Okay, I so, mean it can for fives, but so the button's raising like sevens with like sp good suits, right? Yep. Like unblocking all of the other ones. Um. Because I guess, and then like any seven X that can improve, it's raising almost full. Yeah, and it's Nine, like seven eight seven. Yeah, so if the the reason the I guess we just blind. need some seven X, and when you double block, it's like pretty nice to fit in there with our sets. Yeah, you gotta have a straight like right. sometimes because yeah, like yeah. a seven with a flush draw, you're like I'm all in because I want to free roll them. Right. Uh, six seven, you're like I'm all in because I can also free roll them. Yep. And then when you have sevens, you're like, well, if the board is if the rivers is like an offsuit queen, I need to have a straight. Yep. So yeah, yeah, I have two seven blocks. Right. If if it if they get me, they get me. If yeah, he has yeah. ace, whatever yeah. flush draw. But yeah, so like in theory, is it an issue? Not really. In practice, is it an issue? Probably. Yeah. Like you're just not gonna see many flush draws here. You're mostly gonna see straights. So right. if you just like quickly, let's just let's play the node lock game of like dun, hmm. dun, like dun, 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 dun. and like you set strategy and you take away from the you make these hands like not raise or. I'm not even going to touch the frequency at how much a 7x raises. More so, like, does a flush draw raise? Like, probably not. Yeah. Like, I don't think so. Like, right. I just think these hands, like, don't want to do this. Queen jack. A7 might raise a little bit, right? Queen jack, like, get out of here. 10 9. 7 8, that's in there. 10 8, like, I, I, don't, I think people just try to make a straight if mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna play this hand. Like, yeah. You just go like this, and, like, you, the issue is forming. <laughs> they're just so afraid of a straight themselves that they don't. You yeah. don't want to like pile it in with like equity. Yeah, because it's like, oh, I could just run into a straight myself. Yeah. Like right. even raising deuces here, it's like you don't want to raise deuces because they can have a seven. Right. Uh, like that doesn't make much. Well, a six, I could say sure. I'm just gonna call, see what happens, hope it checks through. Eights, I'm gonna try to make us. I'm gonna try for the board to become a seven, and then I win. Right. Like I'm trying to get them to call up and pay off a chop. So like, let's say it looks like this. Like if some straight sometimes, and then you just like have a not straight. Well, we're certainly never gonna get the shove now. Yeah, I don't they're just bladed. Know. Well, of course, they're just bladed. So, like, we go here, or like, yeah, they go here, and like, they go like this. They're like, oh, fuck. Like, can't shove or set anymore. Yeah, we, just, we, we, just shove, we just shove hands that we can free roll with. In yeah. practice, they probably so eight, are. So, 8-7 and bladed. then 7-X with a, with a free roll. Yep, 8-7, seven, 7-X seven with a free roll. Mm -hmm. And then, like, you can jam, like, two sevens sometimes with the good suits, because whatever. Right. Uh, but this is kind of what happens very quickly in practice when, like, Button doesn't have spicy rays. Mm -hmm. You know? Like machine's gonna take ace eight and be like, oh, he's gonna have a lot of folds enough of the time for this to be relatively decent. Hmm. Uh, but because the issue is, in position wants to raise a seven. A seven is a good hand. A seven needs protection and value. But if you raise, you also have to have, have hands that you're bluffing with. Otherwise, you only have value. Right. But if you only have value and you never have the bluffs, then you get free rolled by seven eight. The thing is, facing that large <laughs> size, I think that is okay of a response for Will. Because yeah. I think Dave just tips his hand. Well, and then he also jammed a set. 
Right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think that's that's what happens. You just get backed into a corner. Like Dave probably isn't leading enough low equity hands. And so now when uh Will is in position with a straight, you just get the raise knowing that you funneled him into having like He's funneled himself into having uh, right, exactly. Into having hands that like are gonna stack off that are worse. Like after big lead flop, big lead turn, it's like what hand does he have that's going to fold? Right. Not many. Right. So right. I'm just gonna take my value hand and raise. Yeah. And then he's gonna take his worst value hand and jam. Yep. It's great. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's great for Will. It's bad for Dave. Good Dave, for Will, bad unfortunately, for Dave. you are in the muck. Yeah. Uh, this is why you don't break flow. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's not because it's it, it's truly an important thing to take away from here. Breaking flow uh, and finding donk leads is a very tricky strategy. So if you aren't calibrated to the proper sizing sequence, then you having broken flow and taking the lead now is a big problem. If he had just check raised his hand instead... This plays out very differently, mm-hmm. right? Maybe you're a lot more conditioned in how to navigate a turn five through a check raising line. Maybe not though. But the point is you have to be able to develop these sizing schemes in some sort of capacity where it becomes second nature, right? Like I just know when a four liner falls that my cap sizing in general is going to be about 40%, right? And we can just see like that's what it prefers. It's going to lean that way because you want to be able to bet more than just the nuts. Mm -hmm. And in order to do so, you can't go large, right? right? So it's very important to understand when the board polarizes versus when your range polarizes. I I think these are different things. You don't want to give them easy decisions too, like queens. Like you you want to make, you want to give these portions of of their range, at least uh, like a thought, like where they don't, where they just be able to just easily fold queens and then lay up, get it in with sevens. Then you're just not, not putting them to tough decisions. Right. Well, while we're on it, um, if you guys would like to submit your own in the muck, be sure to head to our Discord. Hit hashtag Discord in the chat or head to at solve for Y TV. It's our pinned tweet. You can just follow that link. We have an entire forum dedicated to in the muck submissions. Uh, Brian combs through there every single day. We have a preference for heads up pots. Uh, multi-way become a little bit difficult for us to demonstrate with the solver, but you know, put something interesting up there and maybe we'll have a discussion about it. If you would like your own version of GTO Wizard AI, be sure to hit hashtag wizard in the chat. Follow that uh, affiliate link and be sure to sign up for as long as you want to study with them. I can't explain enough how fantastic of a tool I think that is. Oh, I see you out there with the Brents and Boone beautiful things. I've been rocking to that, man. It's oh, a good Benson Boone. So good song. Don't need to get into the whole history of it, but basically he went on American Idol. Katy Perry was like, I think you're going to win this fucking thing. And then he quit. <laughs> but he's just got a contract somewhere or i don't something? know a problem almost <laughs> he certainly had to him. Uh, it's it's actually really sharp if like uh, honestly like maybe he was getting advice from behind i didn't follow uh, i don't watch american idol or anything but like basically once you get to the competition phase or like deep into the competition phase i think they like basically own your rights like i think that they they make you sign like uh, yeah i think it. you're like under contract with them for at least your first deal <laughs> I or think something you're gonna like win i don't want to anymore right Right. It's like he was already somewhat t- TikTok famous. And then sure. um, I imagine he probably just got a better offer and was like, fuck these guys. I'm out. <laughs> uh, guys, I'm gone. That song is really good. Um, if you things. haven't heard it yet, Beautiful Things. It's incredible. It has like this uh, kind of like uh, melodramatic uh, slash rocky tone to it. Very Matt crying in the gym. Yeah, but no. <laughs> no, because it has like a very fast-paced rock chorus to it, sort of. Uh, what I've actually found fascinating is like looking for people who cover it and seeing like to the extremes that they take it. There's a, there's like a metal band that covered it that did a pretty good job of it that I found fascinating. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. What I was going to say is <laughs> after that wonderful breakdown of what's happening when people who are in the low stakes arena. <laughs> right. By the way, uh, shout out to Will, one of our best students uh, at the academy. Will, Chi, Dave. These guys were like top-notch guys, even mm-hmm. though you know Dave made a few sizing errors there. The concepts, they understand them. These guys are winning at 1-3 and 2-5. I would fucking mop the floor with those two. <laughs> <laughs> are we back on this already? Yeah, we're back on this. All right. I would mop those guys if given the opportunity. I don't know. And man. that's no slight against them. I think they're fantastic. What's Will it take has... to make you play like a hundred X crossbook? I I would definitely play for a hundred X crossbook. Yeah. If I could get one three to become one hundred three hundred, yeah, that'd be fucking nice. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. Um, I'm gonna work on it though. I'm kind of sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to be a sick motherfucker to take me up on it. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's a way I can like offer a spot. Hours? I have some ideas. 
I, I have some pretty pretty good ideas, I think, that will result in a whole bunch of content. Um, and I have a meeting on Tuesday on the cruise ship with somebody who may be able to help bring this to fruition. So uh, I'm kind of throwing a tease out You're there. You're having a secret meeting in the bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know Negrano was going to be on the cruise. <laughs> oh, pause. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Um, uh, secret meeting. This, this is... This is something that like I'm becoming a lot more interested in. Uh, the The issue is is that like I don't want to, I just don't want to dedicate all my time to it. But I also think it's fucking laughable when people who are struggling in mid and low stakes, uh, kind of come out of the woodwork to say like you're an accomplished professional. You could never make it in my arena. It's like, buddy, I've already made it in that arena, and I don't need to prove myself to anybody. But it would be fucking great content. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that I'm certain of. Figuring out a way that uh, it could potentially be streamed, and I could potentially get like some sort of cross book on it, right? Because like I feel like streaming it would be important, so that uh, people who are sweating it could watch, and also so that there isn't any question of if if it's my true win rate or not. You know what I mean? Like fuck, you can have every single hand. We'll mm -hmm. we'll keep track of it diligently. In some sort of capacity, so maybe, uh, maybe I just build a streamed one-three game. Stand up every hour. Oh man, you know, <laughs> just uh, partner with a casino somewhere. How much would a casino love this? This this would have to be great, right? This I'm, would be their dream, right? Mm -hmm. I'm your I'm your I'm your bi-weekly one-three streamed host. Yep. Every Tuesday and Thursday, I'm out here running a one-three game for eight hours. But Captain, then the, Captain, the uh, other players in the stream game would have to be come from the one three pool. I don't give a fuck where they come from. I'll play. Well, well that defeats yeah, the purpose, so right? We want to you the the whole point. Oh, right, right. Because if good that, players come, then I'm definitely winning too much. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's the problem. That does that proves nothing. Right, you right, have right, to right. be able to beat the worst players right. to prove that right. you're better than the worst players. That's true. Which makes no Poker sense. Poker out loud is, is broken Landon. He won't even go play the stand-up game in a 1-3 game. <laughs> He's like, I'll, I'll play. No, wait, never mind. Never I mind. Like, no, I was going to no. play. I was like, no, I have too many other things to do. I don't know. No, you definitely have too many other things to do. Go, go when, you're out, when you're out there in the streets, man, you actually got to stand up, too. This ain't no oh, button yeah. shit. Oh, I hate ain't the no, button ain't no stuff. chipless monkeys. It's Look, just, you're standing. Standing up is actually a big psychological aspect of this game. <laughs> standing yeah. monkey one. Okay, yeah. like, when people are physically standing... It is a very different right. world. Right. In Poker Out Loud, we use chips to signify standing, you know, or sitting for production purposes. But, you know, when you're out there, you're, when you're out your there. knees are getting tired, you know. It's, it's, it was leg day. You're like, God, I just want to sit down. That's right. And you start, you start yeeting. Yeah, yeeting. Then, then, <laughs> then tell me if you're playing 100% on the button or yeah, not. Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden, that Jack 8 -0 is like Fucking in there. Lean, you're leaning on one leg. You're like, God, it's getting, getting a little cumbersome standing here, you know. <laughs> Well, they really like to sit. Yeah, what do you get to our age? What's going to be the cap on this game, Matt? Um, I don't know. I, I haven't really worked out the details, but I think obviously in the spirit of the game, I want it to replicate a uh, live environment as much as possible. So probably somewhere around 200 big blinds. Seems like that seems to be the general cap. That's, yeah, that, that's one, three, right 600, there. Unless you're playing Texas 1-3. Yeah. Match, Match stack. stack. Yeah. You have a Texas edition on Friday? I mean, there would be that, right? Like, I would be a little bit more incentivized to travel to Texas for a couple of those streams. Maybe play some low stakes there where it's match stack. Play a little 1-3. Have some meetup games. You're basically Guy Fieri going to Flavor Town. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Diners, dries, and dies, baby. That's only poker style. Yep. I'm. It, it's Berkey's going to... in the street, honestly, in the muck. This the, is in the muck for sure. There, <laughs> you start going to, like... <laughs> Tom, whatever, where we are there yeah there's no casinos in Poughkeepsie. you and jaffe playing one three right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's gonna you be can a whole meet thing nancy from nancy's ah. tires right it's gonna be a whole thing me and jaffe are just gonna travel the midwest mm -hmm. and we're gonna grind one three for the better part of a year uh so just make, silver make again. some content man no it's dead that would be some fun content cell mike is dead too I think, I, isn't I it? i'm, I'm glad that. you think so conrad yeah. i could use a videographer oh Mm. You better get your. Uh, well, that sounds, fun really this, turned away. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds miserable now. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it. Sounds it miserable. Seem so great. We huh? need somebody to film all the B roll, buddy. Horrible mm -hmm. idea, uh, mm -hmm. man. I never so thought I'd ever want to say this, but this this is bad. I'll tell this you is what. Bad. You don't want to lose your mind in the process of this. I'll tell you what. There will be a golden <laughs> chair every fucking week in my stream game for Sid. 
I don't know where you're from, Sid. <laughs> he lives here. I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you fucking play, but you have the you have the golden invite, man. You can have my left every goddamn game for the better part of a year. He plays with Lamana at the Jewel. All the time. Oh my god, he he's came a Jewel to the, player. Hold on, he he's, came to the academy, didn't he? I don't know. He's a jeweler. I'm pretty sure Sid came to the academy. I don't think so. Uh, yes. I feel like I would remember a Sid. Was there a Sid? Sid, did you come here? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure you did. How the hell did I meet him? We don't know that you did. His name is just Sid. He's no, an anonymous No, he's not being. anonymous. He's fucking Sid. He Maybe he's Crosby. <laughs> it, could be the, it could be the thing from Ice Age. Right. <laughs> Right, you, you, man, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to give you guys such an education. I'm going to teach them about the Fantastic Four. I'm going to teach them mm -hmm. uh, all about the stand-up game. We're going to play bomb pots every hour. It's going to be a fucking blast. Oh, he hasn't, okay. Of course Real he hasn't. He hasn't blast. gone to the academy. Just because 300 not. people have come to the academy doesn't mean I don't remember every one of their goddamn names. There's been no Sid. <laughs> Actually, there has been. I was going to say there, there has, there has been. been a Sid. <laughs> there has been a Sid, but I knew it wasn't him. But not that one. <laughs> no, because he would never say that because he's been through the academy and he understands. He also knows I would mop him. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta go to like Seattle and play like spread limit with like Max. Absolutely not. That Max is where I draw the line. Max guy from 100. Montana just gave you the invite. Shout out the guy from Montana. Mm -hmm. uh, I will come to Montana, but not to play one three with pot cap. I'm I'm in for big sky. <laughs> yeah, hundred uh, percent. Gotta talk to Victoria. Yeah, about Seattle. That. Seattle's where I draw the line. I'm not playing any fucking spread limit capped at hundred dollars. Like. You just can't a bet you like can't this. Roll, if you can't throw the penny jar in the middle, it's not Well, worth you it. just can't in a bet like this because you can't do things that will continually cap your win rate. Right. Right? Like, you, you have. I would still have to game select pretty hard. Right? Like, I can't just go sit in a 1-3 game where the average stack is 50 big blinds. Right. It's not worth my hourly. Right. I have to be able to maximize, right? So I'm, I'm out here in the streets scouting out the fucking deep stacks. Maybe I would have to play, like, the stream games on, like, you know, days that don't matter, like... Mondays and Tuesdays, we run the stream game. That win one three game can get pretty deep at times. And then like I have to pass on Bobby's room on the weekend because I'm grinding the win on Friday and Saturday. <laughs> you know, sorry this, guys, can't show this up. Is where, this is where we're at now. Um, I've taken this to heart. I, I'm very, very. I feel attacked. How yeah, far I you can tell. Trigger warning. He's fallen far. You're easily honestly, offended. <laughs> honestly, it's not that. It's it's. I actually think. As crazy as it may sound, I actually think that my legacy could be bringing stand-up game Jeez. to low stakes. Uh, maybe. <laughs> like, I just play enough small stakes across the oh, nation. Man, I don't so know. So I thought about Good that. Luck. I thought about, like, the possibilities of, like, carnival games, carnival games in general. Seven Deuce, like, all this stuff ever getting introduced to lower stakes games and having it like that. Yeah. It's just always going to be a private game. Why? It's huh? Why? It's in the public. It's it's in like public ten twenty. Yeah, public ten twenty is a different game. It's like, in public Texas have, for you sure. You have a lot of older guys in like the one three streets and like yeah. the, yeah. they're, they're, not gonna, they're not going to want to stand up. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. we, no, I'll, I'll literally carry around buttons for these guys. Look, I will. I will. It's not about the standing up. It's about the gamble. Yeah, like they don't want this part of this. They, I am, they, they want nothing to do with this shit. I am going to create fun environments. Listen, I know this. I this is what I do. You, I love the well, fun do, environment. Do you understand how many people? Do you know what I do to people are, who don't partake in fun environments? They yeah. die. Do you, I was gonna say, <laughs> do you, understand, you, you gotta see, go. You you don't know about the one three streets. There's a lot of people that hate fun. I understand. <laughs> I I know exactly who these people are, and they will be out. Flash them out. The, one Flushing way or another, right one way or another, we'll get them the fuck out of there. If I have to bust their ass, if I have to dump them up three times so they go home happy, either way, we're getting <laughs> them out of the game. Once Berkey's done with it, there'll be like a quarter of the one three games that there were before, but every single one of them will be good. Honestly, <laughs> possible. I'll pay $100 out of pocket to get people out of the game. I've done that before. You know, like yeah. how much could it hurt? Somebody didn't want to play. I forgot what kind of carnival game it was. I was like, I'll give you 40 bucks. Goodbye. If you haven't already, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe, like, click the bell. Make sure you get those notifications. Where's I the animation? Remind you guys get the animation. He, he just put it up. Okay. That's, that's what reminded me. But yeah, like, honestly, uh, I, I'm kind of joking around, uh, but I, I think it is important when you're a coach. Hmm. I go back and forth on this, right? Like, what's more important? Being able to demonstrate that you could beat the games that the people you're teaching are playing or being at the top of your game in the environment that you play? For many, many, many years, I would have thought the latter. Mm -hmm. Like, just go out and smash high stakes and demonstrate that you're really capable with this game. But the more the market kind of matures and the more that the average student tends to be at that entry level... I think the more important it is to kind of close the gap. I, I got to tell you, I mean, when it comes to marketing, you know, it's 
thinking of my uh, manager and right. wants right. to think like you can be like listen guys I know what it's like. I, I just put in a thousand hours at the stakes you play. I know what it's like <laughs> right. against all these people. Everything, oh, every issue you have, I've seen it. That is kind of the I've thing. I've seen it. I know it. I, I knew it before, it. but now <laughs> I actually did see it and know it. And, and I, can, I can tell that you. That is kind of the thing. It's like, how I, to fix it. I pay 1,000 hours of my time right. to gain like five years of credibility. Yeah. Which seems worth a little bit. Yeah. I mean, hell, maybe even longer. Jonathan Little's still fucking talking about the times he was playing 510 in 2006. Yeah, it's like, maybe I buy myself like 20 years yeah. of grace, you yeah. know? What do you think, Wop? I think you should go for it. Now, of course you think I should go. You just want me to be in as much pain as you're in every day <laughs> when we're setting up this fucking podcast. If you're, if, if you're paying for coaching and you're these guys that are playing in these small stakes, like, what do I think is more important? Like, seeing that the guy that coached me is crushing high limits or that I can see that he can go play the stakes that I play and just make a ridiculous hourly. Like, I think that is really going to motivate someone to. It's so interesting to me because purchase, uh, it, it shows that it's thing. possible, right? Because yeah. I think sometimes like people don't realize how possible it is to have these incredibly huge win rates at these games. The rake being the way it is. Sometimes the game's bad. Sometimes it's this. There's a tight player. There's, they always have it. That kind of thing. But then you go in, right, and just absolutely smash it and be like, here's the blueprint on how to do that. I think that people just really love the idea that their things are individual or separate. Like, my yeah. game is this. Yeah. So, hey, how about you come I to think my it's game comforting. and just wreck, and like wreck them and show me that you can wreck them. I think it's comforting. And I'm, I'm guilty of this, too, in, in other areas. Like, you know. Uh, I'm a big fitness nutrition guru, right? It's comforting for me to look at a guy who looks the way that I want to look and just say, well, of course, if I was on steroids, I would look like that too. <laughs> when I probably wouldn't, right? Like there's there's probably just enough. Like if that guy got natty, he would still look much more impressive than me. Yeah. And I think that that's the right parallel here is that there's a lot of comfort in being stuck in red chip hell and kind of looking up to people that, are in a spot that you aspire to be in like someday. If I had a backing deal, if I had this, right. I would be doing just as well, if not better than that. Somebody put in the comments, like, you have an infinite role for those stakes. That's unfair. And it's like, is it? Yeah, like, I agree. One of the biggest hurdles of playing small and mid stakes is that you're under rolled. But, like, okay. Does that suddenly increase my win rate by 30% because I can take on more risk? If so, then you're just proving my point or for me. Or does that mean you have to start with a 5K roll? Why? I've already done. I've served my time. <laughs> I'm certainly. If I'm gonna go be. Uh, if I'm gonna go torture myself in these stakes, I'm at least gonna give myself the freedom to potentially be the whale. Uh, I, I don't. I don't see any reason to like handcuff the bankroll. Yeah, yeah. Constraints yeah. like. Uh, but you're right. You're right because like then they'll say, well, you got to do it off of an infinite. You have a, you have a billion zillion dollars. I don't have a billion zillion dollars. Right. Right. Exactly. And it's just like. Win rate is win rate. It's mm -hmm. it's derived from the same place. And yes, it's born out of being able to take risk. But if uh, if if you have an amount of money that you feel is too little to take risks with, then you're overvaluing your money, right? Like, or you're undervaluing your ability to get back in action, right? So basically, what happens is you're just putting way too much emphasis on the security of staying put, mm -hmm. and that's your that, like that's a choice. Right. That's what I don't think people understand. Everybody who's saying like, oh, you can't do X, what they're not really acknowledging is that they're making a selected choice to be short-term comfortable in order to endure long-term long pain, right? Where like the one of the biggest reasons, and granted, I recognize my survivorship bias. I totally understand it could have went the other way and I could be fucking an accountant somewhere in Wisconsin. <laughs> like I get that that's how it works, but... <laughs> A big reason why I actually reached a level of success was because I was willing to go broke time and time and time again and then start back from stretch. You went broke from a scratch. lot. See, we, I, I mean, the thing is like, yes not, and no. Not actually broke. Right. Not like legit broke. Just like well, I just poker, swung poker a lot. Broker. Yeah. Yeah. Not even that. It's just I swung a lot. Like I've always endured swings. So it's like I had 60K, I had 10K. Did I go broke? No. But did I torch a, a functional role? Yeah. But I did so in the attempt to scale. And that's how businesses tend to work. You take on some level of risk. When it fails, you hope that you still have a product worthy enough to be able to bootstrap your way back to where you were. And that was the process continually. Like truthfully, I never really had zero or negative dollars. 
there was a small window between 2011 or sorry 2012 and 2013 where i was like on the cusp of being broke broke but the fact of the matter was i always had some sort of like fodder to kind of get back in action even if it was just a couple thousand bucks and i was very willing to go to zero time and time and time again if it meant giving myself some percentage chance of getting to 100k or a million right because that has to be the end game if you're not set up to scale if you haven't if you haven't entered the arena with the uh i don't want to call it the end goal but the mid goal of getting yourself to a sustainable bankroll of getting yourself to a sustainable stake level where you can earn an annual income that will allow you to not only grow your business, but to sustain a lifestyle that you feel comfortable with. If that's not your mid goal, then you're just treading water until you eventually go broke due to variance anyway. There's no protecting a amount of money that is subject to risk of ruin, right? And I think this is the big misleading thing. We see these tweets are like, oh, you need a hundred buy-ins for this. You need a thousand buy-ins for that. Yada, yada. It's like, if you have a hundred thousand dollars and you're still playing one, three, kill yourself. Like you're just not doing it right. You know what I mean? Like you have to be more aggressive. Do not in -game, actually in -game. kill yourself. In game. Okay, that was uh, get to add in game. Right. In game, in game, in game. Pause, is, pause. No hyperbolic over there. <laughs> this is not health advice. <laughs> not financial this is not a news source either. Jeez. But, but like what I'm saying, <laughs> you're just so over it, man. I'm I just frustrated. Man. I get frustrated it. because like, uh, it, it's, it's, it's giving so much weight to the cope. And I understand the cope, man. I went through it like I, I wanted to be I wanted to be coddled too, but at some point there has to be a decisive moment where you say, like, I can or I cannot do this. Wake up, Mr. Poopy Pants. <laughs> yeah. You gotta do hard things. Like that that's a that's a great way of framing it. Like there is no easy into getting to a level of comfort in this game like i was just talking to uh i was talking to somebody at the gym about this the other day we were talking about how we speculate in crypto and stuff like that and in all aspects of my life financially i'm doing incredibly well and i was explaining to him that maybe this is something that is born into me based off of how i grew up or maybe this is just a byproduct of me being too risk on but i was like i truly don't know what the number is that i could accrue wealth wise where I wouldn't feel financially at risk year in and year out. Well, you can always find a way to be. I'm playing smaller stakes now than I have over the last 10 years, right? Consistently. Like, I'm, I've never been this well rolled for a stake level that I've played in my life. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels good, right? I still feel... <laughs> <laughs> I still feel financially stressed. Always. Always. And it's not because... It's not because my risk of ruin is like greater than 5%. It's probably not. But it's because every single thing that I have money invested in is extremely volatile. More money, more problems, man. Is one of them being it's not a cross a book? <laughs> it's a cross book. It's uh, my daily action in the games that I play. It's crypto market. It's a business. Yeah, that's right? just your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is very risk on. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a blue chip stock portfolio. Like you don't have just to play earning five percent year over year. Would you? But and you wouldn't even choose that anyways. I wouldn't. No, you I would, wouldn't because like because you would kill yourself in game. Well, it's not even <laughs> just that. It's just like I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want if. I feel like you get so complacent when that's the case. Like, oh, I have a, a certain nest egg that is earning me my expenses year over year. Retirement. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's very irresponsible that i don't have like an ira or some sort of <laughs> let's get some let's get some i'm just yeah. counting on bitcoin being that that's the you know? IRA. Yeah, to the moon. That, uh, it, it's the you don't new. have an ira you have btc right exactly you get it you understand <laughs> I, trust me i get it right it's like you know i i'm not gonna have social security when i'm old enough for it like whatever um God, but, i would love to live like a poor person for the rest of my life i have a number in my head and i'm like yep what does yeah. that mean live like a poor person so in other words let's say Let's say my number's two million bucks. Okay. So at four percent, we're talking about what? That's like eighty grand. Is it my, my math? Is my math right? Yep. Eighty grand a year for the rest of my life, mm. and not have to do shit. But mm. like, what? So you're just saying you would take the whole two million, you'd throw it in a Roth IRA or something that gives some, me something some, that gives a me four, Vanguard four account. Five, yes. Yeah. Vanguard account just gives you five percent. Like you wouldn't diversify at all. It would just be like guaranteed. No. Just just give me my fucking eighty grand, and I'll just. Go play golf the, and the go pro fishing. The problem with that is 80 <laughs> grand now. Exactly. No, you can live off 80 it, grand a year now, now, but yeah, 80, you can't live off 80, maybe 10, 20 years from now. That's why I said I'd live like a poor person for the rest of my life. 
but but you would get poorer year over year. Yeah. Right. But I'd still have a roof over my head. I've had food. Like, maybe I'll have health care. Maybe eighty. I think eighty grand is going to be okay in thirty years maybe. from now. Thirty years? No yeah. way. No fucking way. Okay. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> do you know what eighty? Jesus. Do you know what eighty grand was worth thirty years ago? Uh, let me a think lot. Here. The cost of living thirty years ago. Um, I'm just I'm guessing. I'm just trying to think about gas. Like gas was probably like what two fifty a gallon. Thirty years ago? Well, like eighty five cents. Seventy nine cents. Yeah. yeah. Thirty years ago. Fuck, really? I was yeah. twelve. My yeah. first my first pump that I ever had when I was sixteen under, was eighty nine cents. Under dollar for sure. Wow, my first pump was like five dollars. Well, that's because you just started me. driving last year. Well, no, I've, been, I've had a car since I was sixteen. It's I'm not fucking me, man. With you. I could have sworn it was like two bucks. No way. Uh I started driving in nineteen ninety six. My first pump gas, was eighty nine okay, cents. Okay, nineteen ninety yep. gas price was a dollar fifteen a gallon. All right, so I wasn't like too far. Okay, so now do 1984, 70? right? Well, that's... Or no, but, no, no, but sorry. No, but that's, that's, that's average. 1980, well, we lived, it probably was under a dollar yeah, yeah. for sure. 1981... Uh, no, no, 1994 it, would be 30 years 94 ago. 94 sure. would be, yeah. Uh, I'm saying 1970 was 36 cents. Right. 1981, it tripled to 119. I would guess that the cost of living, and I think I'm going to be pretty accurate with this because uh, I was below the poverty line at the time. I think the cost of living in 1994, if I had to guess was probably in the neighborhood of $28,000 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and the poverty line was roughly 22 k uh, That should be and, and we, something you can find. Through those last 30 years, it, well, it was minus the last few years, we kind of lived in a relatively like low, lower inflation right. Uh, levels, right? Like if you look at the 1970s and how, how the inflation wow. spiked, if that happens again now... Now we're, you know, okay. now, now that 80K just evaporates real so, quick. So 1985 cost of living uh, was like 17.6K. Okay. What about uh, 95? It, it says, well, I don't know about 95 yet. Well, but today. It says uh, like me weekly median income for a man 25 or older back then was 443. $443. A week. Okay. So that was 40 years ago. That was 1985. Now, you do now. I would guess it's 4X that. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. bet it's like sixteen hundred. You gonna buy that Bitcoin back nah, yet? Or? I think sixteen. <laughs> I think sixteen might be high. Bird. The cost of living in twenty twenty four. You think forty forty five thousand dollars a year is high? I'm gonna say average. Oh, well, that's actually you, you might be right. I'm gonna say in average, Las Vegas. I actually just saw. I'm these gonna statistics. say average is like thirty five to forty. I actually just saw these statistics. Uh, the average cost of living in Las Vegas, Nevada, for a uh, single male is forty seven thousand dollars a year. The average cost of living for a married couple with two kids is two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. Wow. Well, Guapo ain't getting married. Yeah. Nah, yeah, we don't have to worry about the wife and kids. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't have to worry about kids. That's for sure. That's for but, sure. But, but the point is if it's forty five K for a single single male now, thirty years from now, it's almost certain to be closer to a hundred. Right. Ah, this is crazy. Yeah. God damn it's it. also what makes it scary about playing poker too, because if the stakes don't escalate, right? If we just keep playing hundred hundred for the rest of my life, eventually you stop making enough. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's not necessarily entirely true. Maybe hundred hundred is large enough. When does it stop? Yeah. <laughs> the merry ground doesn't stop till you get fucking put in the ground, buddy. No, no, no. I just meant like, when does the inflation stuff stop? It doesn't. It, it, it just keeps going. Maybe, I mean, maybe temporarily if we become a digital currency society where we're all operating off crypto, but even that will eventually have inflation. I, Ma you would assume stop new the tulip, count. Well, stop new, the tulip, new tulip type of currencies would crop up it wouldn't just be bitcoin right well, it's not like, just bitcoin now that's what i mean like we would the, some something would take over for the dollar that wouldn't be bitcoin bitcoin would be the store of value what was like, the bitcoin last would be your you ira job, right me yeah i never had a job you've never had a job no me neither i just no bought it i just started a company that's my job <laughs> No, no, I've, could, I've never. No, your job is not playing one three. Never had a right. casino. Right, right, right. Yes, I'm about mm -hmm. to get a job. Yeah. Uh, Damn, that's wild. I didn't know that. I thought I, you I've had never, like... I've never clocked in. When I was a kid, I did a lot of like hustle work. I, I did concrete with but my. But you've never like worked for a company. No. Uh, which I actually think is a pretty good thing. Like I know people push work onto their kids, hmm. but like remedial entry level minimum wage jobs don't really teach you any skills. Right. But like I did like I laid it's your responsibility, but it's got skills. I, but, I guess. but fuck that. Like I laid concrete with my uncle. I worked on cars with my best friend's dad. Like I mowed lawns. I did things that like give you real world skills. Mm -hmm. So like I have the capability in spite of like being able to live a pretty luxurious life now of being able to handle certain things that you don't have to outsource right like back it's back breaking labor fucking laying concrete everybody should experience that at some point 
Listen, but I couldn't believe it. Uh, we were out my, um, when Skimpy was in town and we were friends. Berkey was supposed to meet up with us, and he gets a flat on the on the way. And then I see an Instagram pop up. Is it is it Triple A coming to, to tow his car away? No, it's Berkey down there fucking uh, just just I'm fucking call Triple A. Yeah, like, no, he's just out there. Donut. Just just got a donut and he's you know changing the tire. Hey, you guys got to. I, I, the only thing I was scared about wasn't like the actual worker. Which I'm like that. surprised. I, you don't have Triple A. You don't just. Like, I do, but like yeah. I don't. They take so fucking long. It took yeah. me 20 minutes to change the tire. It's true. Uh, and, and the only reason it took a long time for that is because the the spare is weird where you actually have to inflate it. It comes with a pump. Yeah. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Like how fucking bougie is this i don't even have a normal donut i have a donut that looks like it belongs on a car <laughs> like it has a fucking yeah. rim yeah <laughs> it was the weirdest thing ever but uh the the only thing i was afraid about was the part of town i was in uh i i pulled into a shopping center or whatever like a i don't even want like a strip mall i yeah. guess and it was after like 9 p.m so all the lights are out and there isn't yeah. a fucking car in the lot <laughs> oh jeez and it's not exactly in the best part of town and these cars kept like Pulling in and pulling out type of stuff. And there's Berkey in his Maserati. <laughs> and I just have a, his phone is videoing. Just yeah, it's like uh, honestly, like Lana goes, "Why'd you video this? Like just for the flex?" I go, "No, literally, I was afraid. I was <laughs> yeah. like genuinely afraid. I wanted there to be like evidence if somebody because the tire iron I have, it's not those old school ones that are like the big T's right. that like spin no, or whatever. Yeah. No, I just have this like little that handheld little fucking you, wrench. Yeah." I'm like, who who am I gonna impale with this? I'm gonna have to throw the pump at him and hope it fucking hits him in the head. Where's your baseballs now? Yeah. That's what that's what I'm saying, Landon. You understand. You gotta, gotta protect keep, yourself. You just gotta have a baseball in your pocket. All right. So moral of the story is I am gonna take on the endeavor of playing one three no limit uh sometime this year for a thousand hours, and I'm gonna get a big cross book down. 50x, 100x, whoever's out there. If you're out there and you're watching this and you want to bet against me, I'll spot you a few bucks an hour. Um what is Plan a few bucks? I don't know yet. Okay. I don't know yet. I'm going to have to figure out like what the... Because I want to make it worth my while. I don't, I don't want to fuck myself. Uh, but I also want to make it worth theirs in case... Like what, what's my expected loss rate? You know, it's not going to be the same as my expected win rate if, uh, if I'm a winner or loser in the game, right? So it's like whoever's betting it is betting that uh, I'm either going to run bad or play poorly or whatever. But if that's the case, I'm probably going to lose like five bucks an hour, right? Whereas if I'm playing well, I could probably win like 40 bucks an hour. So I want to figure out a way to kind of like half that. So maybe I spot them like 15 bucks an hour and I have to overcome that. Uh, it's really going to come down to how much people want to, to give me a multiplier on it. I need to make it at least, at least 10 X stakes. I, I don't think I can play for less. Um, but hopes are I can figure out a way to do this in coordination with a casino and a stream and uh, just get like a regular regular twice a week game off so that everybody can sweat at home. We'll make a bunch of content off of it. Uh, you'll get my Berkey confessional. I'll be in the muck at least three fucking times a mm -hmm. week. You guys are going to love it. Stick around for the ride. It's going to be a blast. We're all going to get rich together and Sid's going to eat my fucking hat. <laughs> I'm going to mail it to him. I, well, I'll just hand it to him because he's going to be sitting directly to my left week in and week out getting check raised all fucking day. Oh, Sid. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when you have somebody in the game that actually fucking check raises? What He's going to have do? a value hand because that's what good players do. Good luck, buddy. Good luck and Godspeed. That's going to do it for us. We'll be back at noon tomorrow. Appreciate you guys as 11 always. Tomorrow? Oh, 11? yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Tomorrow's opening day. So we're coming an right. hour early for you tomorrow. Thank you. 11 a.m. We'll see you guys all then. Peace. Go Bucks.